right, so the dry aging cabinet has been completed. Now we are looking for the meat to be put in there. I had to special order my prime rib, and here we go. Poor customer, and that customer is me. So I'm gonna get this whole box. There's about 50 plus meat in here, compound meat in here, and we're gonna go with dry aging this. So let me show you what it looks like over here. Prime, and there's a good amount of marbling as far as I can tell, but hopefully, once we open this package, we can tell it much better. So let's go ahead with the dry aging. So we are home with our four ribeye slabs totaling 56 pounds. I have wet aged them for about a week. Now the next step is going to uh, take these uh, Crayovacs out, give them a nice cleaning, and then I'll be using these hooks to hook them in my fridge. What I'm going to be doing is I'll uh, dry age each of them for separate times, as in 60 days for one, uh, let's say 30 days for one, uh, 45 days for another one, and 60 days for another one, and then the last one is going to be dry age for 75 days. And at the end of those periods, I'm going to take um, a big slice of each of those slabs, put them into freezer, and then uh, when the 75 day dry aging is completed, I will try to uh, compare them side by side. But in the meantime, each time I finish a uh, dry aging process for uh, each of those time periods, I will come back at you and uh, show you uh, what the results are. So I'm going to get it out of the vacuum Crayovac packaging. Okay, take a little slit and make sure that you get your trash bag ready because you don't want any of these uh, drippings to be on your floor. They might get contaminated later on. Now we have all of the ribeye slabs on hooks. I'm going to rotate them and then I will carry the 50 uh, something pound meat. I guess on this it's a little heavy, but that's all right. We'll get that going. Well, it's definitely not like I could tell you that much. So let's hook them inside the fridge and see how it's gonna come out. Okay, piece number one. Let's get that in. Where are you? Oh, right here. <clears throat> All right, here you go. I'm gonna give you the IP spot here. I like this look, you know, I've been waiting for this for quite a while. And uh, I want to see if I can rotate him if I wanted to. Yeah, it touches the other meat, but still okay. Now I don't worry too much about that. If you look at the steakhouses, they're, uh, all, all that meat is touching each other. So I'm not too worried about it, worried about it. as long as there's plenty of airflow we should be good. So I don't want to sound like I'm an expert on this, but I've done plenty of research. So I'm hoping that we are going to be good. My temperature is good. My humidity level is good and my airflow is good. I'm hoping that this is going to be a success. So wish me luck guys. You know what? I almost forgot because I recently put this in just a few minutes ago. I think it's a good idea to turn our UV light on. So it has been 31 exact days since I put these ribeye slabs in. I have no idea how they look on the inside, but there's only one way to find that out. So I'm going to pick out the one at the very corner over there. You can see that too. Uh, it's the smallest one in size. I'm picking that one out because the more you dry age, the more likely you are to lose um, from the overall um, you, edible meat volume. So let's go ahead and pick out that one.
now that I have my glove on, I can start to work on this beef. Now, let's take a look. It's definitely harder compared to what I had before. Now that is very, very concentrated. I mean, it looks like we might have lost a bit more, but I'm thinking, I mean, it's really, really tender. Like if I were to uh, touch right here, I can feel the tenderness. Um, at this point, I'm gonna make um, thin slices and we'll put it on the uh, barbecue outside. After I cut the thin slices, I cut a thick slice for the comparison I was going to make later on. I uh, vacuumed the thick slice tightly and threw it in the freezer until the next video I needed this for. The pellicles on the thin slices also had to be removed. I've removed them as nicely as possible and saved them for later use. These pellicles are good for so many uses. When I was done with removing them, the beauty of the steak was revealed. Okay, so we have cut our beefs and it's a beautiful day today to try out my very first dry aged ribeye. Now, if you look closely here, we have lost a little bit from the trimmings and this uh, brown area, uh, we can just totally ignore that, that's fine. We wanna get rid of the actual pellicle. Now, uh, the smell of it, it's, I'm not gonna say neutral, but it's absolutely not unpleasant. And I would say it smells um, like neutrally beefy and a little bit cheesy, if I might say. Uh, this, is, this has not dry aged for a very long time. It's only 31 days. So what I will do is after I have brought it down to somewhat of room temperature, I'm gonna place them down right on my grill. And that sizzling tells me that my grill is hot enough. Now about a minute and a half to two has passed and I'm just going to flip it over and do this one as well. So I have to tell you, I do not salt the beef before I barbecue it. So after I cook one side, I add my salt. And for ribeye, I just do not put anything else other than salt. As far as temperature goes, it's a personal, uh, personal preference. There's no such thing as perfect um, steak. Whatever you like, rare, medium rare, well done, medium, whatever it is, it is your choice and everybody has to respect that accordingly. All right, so it has been all set. I'm gonna flip this over because I didn't salt this side. Let's go ahead a little um, when the slices are this thin you don't have to wait for that long uh, only a few seconds is good enough and that's what I like about it so by the time you're getting ready doing your other chores uh, you're good to go with slicing it and let's see what we are getting here Okay, well, to me, it does look good. And the smell of it, I don't know. Uh, let's take a quick look right in the center there. Slight pinkness, and that's fine. And I want to see how it tastes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, very rich flavor. It's almost like, you can't even call beef it's something else and really tender and juicy as well mm. I think I need to get another one to give you a better description this thing just melts in your mouth and really you don't want to just swallow that you just want to keep it in your mouth just enjoy that deep intense flavor well I have a few more, mm, let me finish this up. I have a few more of the other ribeyes, of the other slices, I mean. I'm gonna go ahead and cook the rest of it before my fire dies out. But, hey, I think I can call this a success. My uh, dry aging fridge is working successfully. 
and um, I will uh, go for the other uh, ribeyes as well that are for 45, 60, and 75 days, and we'll let you know accordingly. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them right below, and I will try to get back to you as, as soon as possible. Thanks again, and have a great day.